Do you like excitement? Then come on with us. Because King's Dominion has something for everyone. King's Dominion's for everyone. Now that's excitement. When Kings Island opened in 1972 in Mason, Ohio, it was an instant success. The owners, Family Leisure Center, a partnership between Taft Broadcasting Company and Top Value Enterprises, wanted to expand to a new region and continue that success at a second park. Located north of Richmond, Virginia, a 400-acre section of land was chosen in Doswell and construction began using similar plans to the successful Kings Island. King's Dominion officially opened on May 3rd, 1975, offering 15 attractions. There's only one place that can make this post of the two meanest rides on the whole East Coast. King's Dominion's got them, let me tell you, man. If you ride them, heaven help you, cause nothing else can. King Cobra will loop you for a sky thrill. If that don't get you, then the red will yell with. With so much excitement from beginning to end, you'll beg to get off and get on. Investment continued in the following years with the addition of King Cobra in 1977. Their biggest investment yet though would be added in 1979. Three incredible new adventures and hundreds of new thrills. Plus, the mystery of the lost world. It's a whole new world at King's Dominion. A huge mountain was constructed made of rebar and wire mesh and sprayed on concrete. It was claimed to be the largest ride complex ever built at a seasonal theme park just four years after the park had opened. Standing at 170 feet tall, the $17 million addition would be home to four brand new attractions. The area was known as the Lost World Mountain. Outside was a flat ride named Mount Kilimanjaro, whereas located inside you would find three rides. The first, Journey to the Land of Dews, was a children's ride where beneath the surface of the earth, a tribe of little creatures made the world work. Cranking the gears that made the world turn and pushing up growing plants, among many other activities to keep the world running. Inside were multiple animatronics on this slow moving train ride that carried passengers through the Land of Dews before heading outside across a wooden bridge back to the station. Get ready for the smurfiest time you've ever had, because now the Smurfs have come to King's Dominion, and you're invited to ride through their new home, Smurf Mountain. You can also see their great new Smurfy show. And best of all, you can meet some of your favorite friends in person, like Papa Smurf and Smurfette. So come on out and say hi to your new neighbors, the Smurfs, at King's Dominion. Five years after opening, the ride was changed to Smurf Mountain, which many people came to know the mountain name itself as. The show scenes inside were replaced with the Smurfs. The ride lasted around seven minutes and was designed and built by Arrow Dynamics. The trains were powered by electric at the control of an operator in the lead car. The motors though were not powerful enough to head up the steep incline so it also featured a chain lift. A weird mix of engineering from Arrow that caused multiple mechanical issues for the slow ride. Voyage to Atlantis was a flume ride also built by Arrow Dynamics, a mixture of family thrills which really did not relate much to Atlantis at all. Inside were skeletons and shipwrecks. A year after opening, the ride was rethemed as Haunted River, which featured multiple show scenes during your log ride. Imagine sailing an underground river unlike any, any seen by man. You're on a course into a world where every turn reveals a horrifying experience, where every nightmare comes to life to greet you and you alone, for this is The Haunted River. The first scene was a giant face projected on a film loop that gave an interesting 3D effect. The piranha scene had glow-in-the-dark fish hanging on wires, and the Egyptian scene had mummies and an undead Cleopatra being fanned by skeletons. Next was the most impressive, the ghost pirate shipwreck scene, with over a dozen animatronic skeletons in pirate gear singing on an almost full-size ship replica. Further scenes include an impressive graveyard scene before the spooky face returned for the final 40-foot drop. The last ride inside the mountain was Time Shaft, 
the advertised more intense ride of the mountain, a rotor ride similar to what could be found at most travelling fairs. Located at the far right hand side of the mountain, it was reached by a long tunnel, mostly covered in chewing gum. The highlight of this version of the ride was at full speed the floor dropped one foot below the riders and triggered a light show in the room as guests were stuck to the wall. Many, many people threw up exiting the mountain from this ride. So much so that a team had to be brought in to fix the footers due to a vomit based corrosion. Over the years popularity of the attractions declined and in 1993 Smurf Mountain was closed the same year Paramount purchased the park. The Haunted River and Time Shaft were closed two years later in 1995 leaving the Lost World Mountain completely empty. The mountain sat empty for the next three years but development had been underway on something new and something much more thrilling that would find its home at the mountain. At first ideas were drawn up for a themed attraction based on Paramount's upcoming movie Congo but when that movie did poorly those plans were scrapped. Development on the new ride began in 1996 and this attraction would not only set a new record for speed but be the first of its kind. With an investment of $20 million, it was known as Volcano the Blast Coaster. If water leaves you a little cold, how about some fire? Officially announced in 1997, it would bring new life to this section of the park and designed by Werner Stengel and built by Intamin, it was the world's first inverted coaster to have a linear induction motor launch, as well as the only one to complete a full circuit. Featuring a 150 foot tall vertical climb straight up and out of the peak of the now iconic mountain, it would really blast the volcano back into life. Tunnels began to be cut through the original structure for the track in late 1997, along with the lowering and widening of the mountain's peak to fit the new ride. The design was ambitious. The launch technology was relatively new and with it came multiple issues. As expected, the ride had multiple delays and on August 3rd, 1998, Volcano the Blast Coaster officially opened. During the first season, the ride operated at half capacity while bugs continued to be fixed. With fireballs erupting from the mountain, the new coaster was a sight to behold. With trains twisting through the sky around you, the days of smurfs and log rides were long gone at the Lost World Mountain. The 2,757 feet of track took you up to 70 miles per hour as you launched up through the mountain with four inversions. It very quickly became the most popular ride at the park. Volcano was one of the most innovative and intense thrill rides ever conceived, a suspended catapult coaster that was really breathtaking to look at, reusing the structure of old to create something new and unique. Over the years the ride was plagued with multiple issues and much downtime. Finally in early 2019, King's Dominion unexpectedly announced that Volcano would not be returning. Over time, the park stated it had become nearly impossible to keep the ride up to high standards of reliability and guest satisfaction that the park strived to achieve. For 20 years, the ride stood launching out the top of its volcano and had many fans, but the sad truth was the ride had become more and more unreliable. The part that hurt fans of the ride the most though was that they were unable to take one final ride as the last minute closure announcement meant it would never reopen again. The general consensus was that something had to be done to the coaster such as a full refurbishment, but the full closure and removal came as somewhat of a shock. Will the mountain be refitted again for a new purpose? Unlikely, but who knows what awaits the future of this important part of King's Dominion history. <laughs> The only complete circuit inverted launching coaster in the world was extinct and the mountain was once again dormant. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Weekly. I was lucky enough to get to experience this unique attraction. What do you think should be added to King's Dominion to replace Volcano? Let me know in the comments below. A special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming expeditions and we will see you next time.